I'm North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth, and I, along with our town board, are proud to present At Home with North Hempstead, a series of special programs for children, seniors, as well as entertainment for residents of all ages. We hope you enjoy this special presentation and check back often for new content. everybody it's Eric the Reptile Guy hope you guys are all having a great day and enjoying the time uh, to be home with your families and wishing that everybody's staying safe and healthy and uh, and doing all the things that you need to do to make sure that you are getting your work done and you're enjoying yourself and and really doing your best to enjoy this time I know it, it may not seem like an enjoyable time for everyone However, you, you must enjoy the life that you have. So make sure you do that and um, be always grateful for, for the time that you do have here. And so I want to start with that because I feel grateful every single day. And I'm smiling and I'm wearing my happy shirt right now. So today we're going to meet some amazing animals. So we're going to meet a few animals. Um, and each week we're going to meet a few different animals. And sometimes we're going to be out in the wild. But today we're actually going to be right here because the animals that we're going to see are animals that are under a special license that I get from the Department of Environmental Conservation to conduct the work that we do. Now, we've been doing live animal shows for the past, oh gosh, 23 years, a while. And um, as I progressed through this, I realized how important it is to make sure we respect the animals and always respect nature. So if you guys want to respect nature together, then I need you all to do something for me. I need you all to raise your right hand and say, I promise to always follow my dreams, have fun, be happy, and enjoy and respect nature. So make sure you do that and you'll always be successful and make sure you always use earth friendly things too because the first animal that we're going to see is very very important to the well-being of our planet and we're going to meet it right now but before we meet it i want to see if you guys can guess what it is i'm sure if you guys have seen our show before you know what it is already but it's an animal that comes from madagascar now if you've ever seen the movie madagascar then you know who the king is in the movie madagascar the king in the movie madagascar is king Julian. King Julian. And King Julian is what type of animal? Does anybody know? If you're not sure, I'm going to tell you right now. King Julian is a type of an animal called a lemur. And you can see there, I'm actually in Madagascar in this video playing. Well, I wasn't playing with them, but I sort of was. They were playing with me. So I was like, literally, they were jumping all over me and I was like bugging out because I'm not really used to to mammals like that, like, you know, jumping all over you. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But it was fun. And so I just wanted to share that with you. And now we are going to get a chance to meet our first uh, animal, which is a bug from Madagascar. And they are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. If you guess hissing cockroaches, then you're absolutely right. And so before we meet the roaches, before we meet the roaches, um, I want to see if you guys can guess which one of these containers actually contains the roaches. Hold on a minute. Let's see. Is it the container in the right or is it the container in the left? The container on the right or the container on the left? You guess right and you'll get a prize. <laughs> and the prize is that you get to kiss the roach through the screen. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. So here, let's place this one down there and we're going to open each one. So let's see, let's see first. Let's open, let's open this one first. All right, let's see, let's have a look inside. And if you look inside, if you guess this one, there's no roaches in there. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and so no roaches in there, but maybe inside here, let's see. And yes, there are plenty of roaches in here. There are a plethora of roaches inside here, and you're gonna get a chance to meet them right now. Now, dun, 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 dun. here they are. Hello everyone, we're the Madagascar Roaches, and we're very happy to be here with you guys today. This is a thrilling experience. It's really enjoyable to be here with Eric and quarantined in the house. In fact, one of us got loose, 
and was under the flower pot yesterday. So this is a really exciting time for us. Very, very exciting that Eric's home with us every single day doing shows for you guys. Awesome. So yes, it, it, it actually, I'm enjoying our time home alone with my roaches. Have a look, you all. That one's the female. And that one there, we see with the little horns on his head, that one's the male. All right, so, so, and he's here a little, oh, he just hissed. Did you hear that? Listen, 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 listen. Did y'all hear that? Listen again. Oh, he hissed. That's so cool. So it actually is. So yes, they're hissing cockroaches because they actually, they actually really do hiss. And so that's why they call them the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So pretty interesting that they do that. And you know what else, you all? You know what else, guys? Um, these roaches had babies. And there's one little baby roach in here. But I, I, actually, there's two little baby roaches in there. I just want to be super careful not to take them out. Now, this is not their, their enclosure, but we put them in here during the time that, that we're doing shows so they're, they're comfortable. So we put them in there so they're comfortable. So that way, you know, when I go to take them out, they don't like spray and bug out. Because if that happens, then I will have an allergic reaction and I break out in hives. But I've noticed since I, like, I'll take them out a couple days before, let them, you know, get their food, have everything inside there for them. And then it actually works out that I don't break out in hives. So much, much better. You see this one's running away. That one's the one that was loose actually in the house. <laughs> don't let it loose. Anyway, so we're going to say goodbye to the roaches. Actually, wait, wait, wait. There's one more important thing I forgot about, you guys. So everyone, don't say goodbye just yet. So you see, that's the one that was actually loose in the house right there. That's the male. And the thing of it is, you all, that roaches all are insects. And all insects are very important because they all do certain things for the environment. Like insects can feed other animals. Like my frogs, some of my frogs eat insects. They eat crickets. And um, the birds eat insects. And many other animals do too. Some reptiles eat insects too. And the other part of it is that not only that do they eat insects, but they are decomposers. So everybody say decomposers. So a decomposer is an animal that actually helps to provide fertilizer for the ground. So in other words, it poops on the ground. So the roaches poop on the ground, it fertilizes the plants and helps keep things going. So without fertilizer, plants can't grow. So the poop from the from the roaches and from worms and from other animals serves as fertilizer and, you know, and now I, I couldn't say people because people have a cesspool, which is kind of weird, but, um, <laughs> but, you know, animals in the forest don't say, wait, Let's go to the toilet. You know what I mean? They like to just poop on the ground, you know, where they are. But but on that, they keep moving and they move deeper into the forest. Then it rains and then the rain washes the poop into the ground and then the animals start to dissolve it. Think about it. Dung beetles in Africa, they eat all the poop. You know what I mean? They, they roll it around in a giant ball and then they, they, they eat it and, you know, use their, you know, feed their babies with it. And it's all kind of cool things that poop do, does. And so <laughs> I said poop do, but poop does. <laughs> Anyway, so with that said, we're going to say goodbye to the roaches and remember to um, to consider to not use pesticides on your lawn or any place because the roaches and other bugs will get can negatively be affected by it and bugs will certainly die from it. And there's one particular animal that really is probably the, the, the greatest example at this time to share with you about animals that are affected by pollution and not using earth friendly things or insecticides or pesticides or even even herbicides or even um even fertilizers animals are all affected by these things and so uh, we, we want to keep that um at the forefront of our mind when we start to purchase things to you know to for our lawns and things like that and so let's let's um let's have a look at it so say goodbye to the roaches say bye roaches and now we are going to see our next animal. And the next animal we're going to meet is a frog. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to meet a frog. Now, before we meet the frog, I need you to all do me a favor. We're going to wake the frog up. And the way we wake the frog up is by making a sound like a frog. So ready? On the count of three. One and two and three. Everybody make a sound like a frog. Okay. I heard you guys virtually. <laughs> well, I heard a lot of people saying ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. And you know what? 
there aren't any frogs around here that make that sound. In fact, there might be one frog, like the Yosemite mountain frog in California. I'm just making that up now, actually, but there might there, there may be a frog in California because a friend of mine had mentioned that to me. However, the frog we're going to see right now actually comes from Australia, and it's one of my favorite frogs, and she's called the Dumpy Tree Frog, and she sounds like this. Everyone make that sound. <laughs> That's the sound that the frog makes and we're going to meet her right now. And her name is Hop the Tree Frog. So let's go get her. We'll be okay, here she is, you guys. Here she is. This is Hop the Tree Frog. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. We're very grateful for you guys to be here with us during the quarantine time because it is quarantine time. But actually, Eric enjoys being here with us. And we enjoy him being here with us too. So we don't mind being quarantined because we get lots and lots of crickets and food to eat. So this is a wonderful time for us. So yeah, you see that? It's a wonderful time for them. It's a wonderful time for me. It's a wonderful time for everybody. It's a wonderful world. So guys, this is this is Hop. And she is a, is a dumpy tree frog or a white tree frog. And what's amazing about tree frogs is that actually right now, all over the Northeast, in the Northeastern part of the United States, there are tree frogs waking up. There have actually been frogs awake since since March, but one of the frogs that the tree frogs that's been awake is the spring peeper, and one that's waking up right now is the gray tree frog. Right now, during during uh, during this 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 uh, springtime, the 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 gray tree frog is actually waking up. So you can actually find a gray tree frog, and obviously you can't find a dumpy tree frog here because they're from Australia, but they have similar characteristics. Now, if you notice, the frog she, she's gonna jump on my head. I can see she's like she's she's poising herself to jump on my hat. But guys, the frog has special pads to allow them to stick to just about anything. So she can stick, if, you go, if I go like that, you can see, she can easily stick to my finger, right? She can stick to my hat, watch why she can stick to my hat like that. And this does not hurt her at all. She can stick to my hat like that. And I would stick it to my face, but I got lotion on my face, so I don't wanna do that. But you can see, we can stick her to, we can stick her to, look, we can stick her to the back of, of the turtle shell, just like that. Dun, 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 dun. You can see, the tree frogs can stick everywhere just like that because they have special hands. Now everybody go like that with your hands, and everybody look at your hands, and everybody say, glands on your hands. So, we have glands on our hands called sweat glands. Everyone say sweat glands. But if you're a tree frog, guess what? You don't have sweat glands. Instead, you have sticky glands called mucus glands. Everyone say mucus glands. So it's actually like boogers coming out of your hands if you're a frog like this. And so yes, yes, they have sticky hands like that, so it helps them. Now, I wanna share with you guys something really cool too. Another cool thing is if you look at her belly, you see her belly? If you're a tree frog or any frog for that matter, you actually drink directly through your stomach. You drink through your skin because tree frogs and all frogs and all amphibians have what's called permeable skin. Everybody say permeable skin. So permeable skin is skin like a sponge and so you can absorb water directly through your skin just like this so all the water goes directly into your skin and so you can totally you can you can totally survive well provided that there's no water pollution. If there's water pollution, guess what? then the frogs can't survive. And so it's really important to make sure that you understand how important it is to make sure you use earth-friendly things. And so let's make a pledge right now. Let's make a pledge and we're gonna do it with the frog in our hands, okay? So ready? Everybody raise your right hand and say, I promise to always do my very best to use earth-friendly things. And if you do that, we'll have a nice, clean, healthy environment safe for frogs and safe for all of us. So make sure you use earth friendly things for the sake of the frogs on the planet and everywhere. Now, just so you know, and this is a very important information I'm gonna share with you, is that frogs worldwide are, have been, frogs and amphibians in general have been going extinct at a rapid rate. More amphibians have gone extinct in the last 20 years than any other time in history. And so this is crazy that this is happening now. A lot of new things in history have been happening. But guess what? A lot of these new things in history have been happening because of, of the activities that people do on a daily basis. So if you pay attention to your activities, like what you put down the drain, what you put in your body, how much waste do you use? How much paper do you use? You know, do you waste things? Do you use things? Do you pour things that are poisoned down the drain? Those are really important things. The, the, uh, the um, conserving water is very important too, because in certain places there is no water. 
However, there's no water shortages right now. There's really no water shortages anywhere. We're surrounded by water. It's just the, the fact that in a lot of places, there's not potable water. There's not enough clean water because of the activities that people do on a daily basis. And so if people are using pesticides and chemicals or, or washing with, with harsh detergents and things or bleach, those things going down the drain make the water not drinkable and make the water not usable for animals like frogs. And so please make sure you use earth-friendly things to, uh, that go down the drain that are completely biodegradable and that are really good for the earth and not toxic to the environment. So um, just keep that in mind of using earth friendly things like for example you can plant citronella geraniums or you can plant lemongrass or you can plant lavender you can plant any of these things that that's right here and behind me you can plant any of these things and those things will keep the bugs away for sure now for all you Long Islanders out there if you ever lived on Long Island New York which is where I grew up in Long Island, I was at the Long Island Game Farm, and I stayed there during the year 2014 for, for more than half the year, for like more than like eight months I was there, and I was there for the better part, for all the summer, and I said, well, I'm living in a camper right now, and it was all good, we had a discovery place for our animals, it was awesome, but guess what? I planted two pots of lemongrass on either side of my entrance to my camper, and then I planted some lavender, but I had two doors to it, two, two entrances, and then I planted some lavender on one side, the lemongrass on the, on the main entrance, the lavender on the other side where the bed entrance was, and guess what? There was no, and that was actually, you know, where I opened the, when I opened the window, the lavender smell would come in, so it would be like nice for sleeping. And I'm telling you, I didn't get one mosquito bite. Not one, not one. All right, you all. So everybody say goodbye to our frog for now. And guess what? Now it's time to meet some snakes. <laughs>
So everybody at home, flick your tongue out. Go. Now, every time a snake sticks their tongue out, they can find out where food is by using their special forked tongue and a nose, but a nose that's actually inside their mouth. It's inside their mouth. So their nose is inside here that actually does this, the smelling for them. And so when that nose flicks out, when the tongue flicks out like that, they can pick up the molecules from the air and know exactly where there's food. It's really remarkable, the snakes. It's just, just amazing how they do that. And so just so cool. And, um, and yup, so that's all about Bobby. And one last thing I want to share. The other reason I said about reading, pets, reading about your pets before you get them is because look at this picture of me there. That was when I was 12 years old and I snuck my first ball python in the house. That was the morning after my dad found it, the night before, and in the middle of the night, because he just went in my room to go close the window and check on something, and he saw the light from the cabinet that I put the snake in, and he said, I'm your snake. I'm like, no! And I was in trouble, and so anyway, dad found it, and then after he found it, I was really upset that um, I couldn't keep it, but the next morning, we did do a little photo shoot, shoot with the snake, and you can see that's me when I was 12 years old with my first ball python. And actually, there's another picture of me with my carpet python there, too. And um, yeah, that was me with my snake. My, that's when it started, even before that, when I was young. So it's been a little, quite a while, so it's kind of nice to see that I'm still living my dreams and still doing what I love. That's why I always share that with you, so you remember to make sure you actually do it. Live your dreams, do what you love, no matter what's happening in the world. Always keep your dream in your heart and do activities that work towards your dream. So if you like to draw, draw. If you like going for nature walks, go for nature walks. Social distancingly, of course. <laughs> With social distancing, of course. And, uh, and um, But really, all these things you have to make sure you find in your heart what you love to do and do it. What better time than now to really start living your dreams and, and, and do it as you, as you go along for your whole life. So even after this all has passed, you will continue to live your dreams and do what you love. So it's so important. All right. Well, with that said, everybody say goodbye to Bobby. Say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining. All right, everybody. Here's Oreo. Say hi, Oreo. Hey, everybody. I'm Oreo. What's up, you guys? Look at my tongue. See his tongue, you guys? So I have to hold Oreo securely like this because Oreo, he likes to be held very close. He wants to know that I'm that, that I'm not going to hurt him. Okay, buddy, okay. He wants to know I'm not going to hurt him, not hold him too tight. But I have to hold him like this, otherwise he starts to like like bug out. He doesn't like uh, not being like that. But I adopted Oreo because guess what? Somebody had him as a pet. Someone had him as a pet and they couldn't keep him anymore. And actually he got loose. He was found in the town of North Babylon crawling around. And I got a call from the Babylon Town Shelter that they had this lizard there. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I, they said, after, just like, can you tell us what kind of lizard he is? And I was like, sure. So I went over there. They sent him, actually, they sent me a picture first. And I looked at it and I said, wait, he's a tegu. And he would actually be the third, the third or fourth tegu that I ever had. And I love tegus. They're the best. But the only thing, guys, is that they really do take a lot of work to care for and they need a lot of space because oftentimes tegus end up getting loose because they need a lot of r roaming and running around. In nature, they roam, they run around, they look for things to eat all day long. And so, you know, our uh, Oreo, he's allowed to roam the house pretty much. They do sleep in wintertime, but when they want to roam, they want to be able to move around and not feel restricted. And that's really important for animals to have that freedom. Now, if you look at his tongue, just like the snake, he has the same forked tongue. But also, you see, he has these big cheeks. Male tegus have these giant cheeks like this. Those are his cheeks. So he's like, look at my cheeks. Look at my cheeks. Look at my ch 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 ch, -ch cheeks. So he has cheeks, and the cheeks actually... It's how he, he courts a female. So that's how he does that. Now, I got to tell you, if you look at his eye right now, see his right eye? I'm really thrilled about his eye being like that because last year we had to get a, he had to get surgery. And it was really quite sad that he had to get, not sad, but yeah, it was, it was a bit sad because we thought he was going to have to get his eye taken out. But it actually turned out really well thanks to Dr. Greco. And you can see here, that's me after I was really happy that the surgery went well. But it was a crazy surgery he had to go through. And, um, uh, but the surgery, when he, when, he, when he went under the anesthesia, the surgery itself was nothing crazy. But the anesthesia was crazy because it could be dangerous for them. So we had to watch his anesthesia. I was nervous. But he did just fine. You know, we have a, an expert uh, veterinarian out in Long Island. And um, he was fine. He did great. And so... 
So it's all good. And so now he's doing just fine. So I'm really thankful to Dr. Greco uh, for caring for our, our wonderful, wonderful Tegu. But anyway, you guys, I'm uh, wishing you guys all enjoyed this presentation. There's a lot more to come, so keep watching every week. And uh, we'll see you soon. But for now, say goodbye to Oreo. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Okay, Oreo. Okay, 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 okay. Let's close the shark. All right, Oreo. Relax, 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 relax. All right, I got to put him back. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye.